Hey, it is time for Game Relics, episode two, in which we give Volcar here a bit more of a proper home, uh, a fine island to rule over. Um, I've done a lot in the past few weeks. I can't wait to show it to you. Before you watch, though, if you haven't watched episode one, I suggest you go back and watch that so you can kind of get a, get a handle on what we're all about here. Anyway, uh, if you've watched it and you're ready for the adventure to continue, by all means, keep, uh, keep going and we will jump right into it. So our episode begins with me in the studio at the crack of dawn, trying to build a volcano in the brief amount of time I have while the slip is sitting in the molds for today's slip castings. Well, that's it. Time's up. Um, it doesn't look like much, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm on the right path. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this. Uh, the trick is not blocking the play. Like I want people to be able to get in here and move their characters around um, without being inhibited by the volcanic shape. Um, yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. Anyway, we'll jump back on this uh, the next time I've got a few minutes to play. Okay, we are switching gears. Um, once again, early in the morning, I have a, looks like I'm gonna have about 20 minutes to work on the island today. I am going to rip out all that foam that I did the other day and switch to cardboard. I have uh, like a normal corrugated cardboard and then I have like some like press board stuff. I, I like the idea of building up, you know, the form like an armature like I was doing before, but that foam uh, with the hot glue it was just melting and it, was, it would be changing its shape. So I'm gonna to switch to something a little stiffer um, and we'll see how it goes. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making it up as I go along. So hopefully this works better. So I decided to switch to cardboard and this press board stuff after doing a lot of Google research on building model train dioramas and seeing how people build up the mountainscapes that they use for model trains. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, so I basically went through and made all these little cardboard arches that would fit the player characters so that you could still move your characters around on the board. And I slowly replaced all of the foam that was too bendy and melty with the hot glue with kind of a lattice work of press board and cardboard. This was kind of a tricky section where you have two paths, one on top of each other, and then also a channel that a fireball is gonna shoot down. And all of those paths have got to kind of work their way through the wall of the volcanic crater. So it, it, was, it was a bit of a challenge. Okay. I think I've got the volcanic crater built up to the point where I'm happy with it and I'm going to start mixing up some of the, um, the epoxy putty and packing in there. I'm going to use for more, some more of the free form air just to fill in this form and get it firm enough that I can then go back with the more detailed sculpting putty um, to really put in the, the, you know, the rock texture. Now, I want to do more, but I also want to just make sure that this is going to work before I do any more. So um, really quick, let's just go over the fiddly bits and then we will mix up some epoxy. So my whole goal was to have a great, you know, volcanic crater look when you're looking at like a bird's eye view of the island. Now, I also wanted it to look cool as you are approaching from sea. It would look, you know, like a volcano. Um, and I also didn't want to interfere with gameplay. I want to be able to make sure that you can move your characters in and out and you won't, you know, every time I have a little archway that you've got to go through. I think there's still plenty of room. I have this neat, I love this, like I did like a collapsed section of the the crater walls and you'll be able to look through them and even see Volcar from that viewpoint. Um, yeah, so I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I really like this backside. I've got channels for marbles, channels for players. I'm building up the caves. So I put a little bit of extra bits on all of the caves so they'll, have more depth and once I put the epoxy on here I'm gonna I'm gonna route out this I'm gonna get this a little deeper pretty excited overall I think it's gonna be awesome let's mix up some putty so big news before we start mixing the epoxy is this Ta-da! 
I got the second bridge on eBay. Now I had this bridge, it came with my original game board, and I was planning on building this second bridge, but I figured it might just be easier to buy one. Now there is a bit of a dilemma with these things, and that is this. Um, I did a pretty darn good job of packing epoxy into the original game board, except for this one critical area, and sadly this is where the bridges are supposed to go. I didn't fill it up all the way. You can see there's like a, it's supposed to be like way up here. And these bridges sit, I don't know, something like this. And like another one sits over here. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and look at the original board and re-sculpt this whole area so that the bridges sit correctly. But I'll save that for after we build the volcano. Also, before I get started, I should say I have no idea what I'm doing. I have mentioned that before, but I just want to reiterate that because if you're watching this thinking, there probably is a better way to do this. I'm sure there is. I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go along. Um, and I've gone through different materials trying to figure this out. Like I remember I started with this foam, did not work too well. The cardboard, we'll see if it works. Um, I'm worried that maybe when I put the epoxy on and I go back to resculpt stuff that I'll be running into the cardboard. I don't know. But anyway, just want to throw it out there that we are on a voyage of discovery together. Let's do some epoxy. This is Smooth On Freeform Air. It's a two-part epoxy putty. Same stuff that we used to build up the game board in the last episode. So as usual, it's being a little tricky to work with, but I've got a little bit of a workaround. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking the, um, the big batch that I mixed up into little kind of pea-sized bits, and then I get rubbing alcohol on my gloves, and that lets me pack it into where I want it to go. Um, and then without it, you know, sticking to my gloves, it kind of just stays where I want it to go. I'm not worried about how rough this looks. This is just to hold the structural form. We're going to do all of the final finishing with the finer sculpting epoxy and a lot of sanding and grinding with the rotary tool. This is just, this is just the bones of the mountain. Okay, that's the first batch of epoxy that I mixed up. Not gonna lie, it looks awful. But don't, don't judge it by its looks just now. I, I think it's gonna be great in the end. Uh, like I said, this is just the, the foundations, the building blocks. Um, so I'm gonna let this set up. Uh, it's gonna take overnight. Uh, and then I will add on some more tomorrow and we'll keep building. Now, I could probably use Bondo for this and, you know, like that, that, uh, that polyester auto body putty stuff. Um, I just, oh, that stuff is so stinky. I'm not a fan of Bondo, um, but oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll dip my toe back into the Bondo pool if I must, but let's just see how this goes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let this set up. I'm gonna finish up the rest of it. Um, and then I'm gonna sand a little back, uh, hit it with some primer, and then we'll start sculpting some real fun detail stuff. Um, yeah, and then once I get good with that, then I can go back and tackle this bridge section that I didn't fill in correctly. I want to make sure I'm really got my technique dialed in before I get into that because that's a little technical. Yeah. Don't judge it. Don't judge it just yet. Give it time. All right, it's the next day. I just poured slip. I've got 16 minutes before I've got to flip the molds. In the meantime, I'm going to get a little bit more epoxy onto the board. Yesterday's stuff set up really nicely. This is firm, strong, looking good. So I'm going to do a little bit more, 15 minutes worth. Now that the armature is nice and stiff, I can really pack the epoxy on and uh, really just cover up every little bit of that cardboard and build up these mountains. So a lifetime ago, back in the mid nineties, I got my first job as a special effects artist and I bought my first Dremel, the rotary tool, and I used it daily. I mean, I used that thing nonstop for years and years and years, up until about, I think, I uh, see, I left LA and then we moved back to Hawaii. And it was like, I think about 2008, finally gave it the ghost and died on me. And I have not replaced it since. Um, I've often yearned for it, but I just haven't really been able to justify buying one until now on this project. Now I'm like, I think I'm really gonna need a rotary tool so I reached out online. Thank you to everybody who gave me uh, some advice and info on what they thought I should get. Um, weighed my options and I decided to go for this. Yeah. 
Yeah. I got the Fordham. I, uh, I had a friend, uh, I think you know who you are out there, Jake, uh, who had one of these back in the special effects shop that I worked at, and it was incredible, and I've heard from lots of people who love theirs, so I'm gonna give this one a go. Now, I am not sponsored by Fordham in any way, shape, or form, but if you wanna send me some accessories, I'm right here. Um, anyway, I'm not quite at the point where I need to crack this open and use it just yet, but I can't wait until I get there. Um, yeah, first I gotta finish building up the mountain bits on the volcano. So yeah, I'm excited about this. Back to the board game. All right, it is Saturday. I have got most of the day to work on this. It's gonna be wicked hot today, but I'm gonna get outside because it's gonna be super dusty and we're gonna do all the cutting with the new Fordham tool outside. But here's where we're at. All the cardboard is covered. We've got a great volcanic shape developed, which I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get into this. Now, before I get into it, I have to do a couple things. One, the Fordham tool, it needs a stand uh, to operate. It kind of hangs while you're working on it. And I uh, didn't buy that stand accessory, so I'm gonna try to make one really quickly out of wood. And then uh, we're gonna get up, set up outside. Like I said, I don't wanna fill the studio with uh, epoxy sawdust. Um, so excited, so excited. So the challenge of building this stand was I had to do it with everything that we had in my little studio and garage at the time. Uh, due to the current events, I'm trying to not go to the hardware store as much as possible. And I also have never used this Fordham tool before, so I wanted to make the stand kind of adjustable. So as you can see, I have multiple hanging points and I put it on this long bolt so I can raise it up and down by about five inches, depending on where I think I might need it. So here it is, a couple hours later, we have got a homemade Fordham machine stand. Let's take it for a test drive. So the new Fancy Pants Fordham tool, not only is it slightly intimidating, it has a lot of parts. You've got the main motor, you've got this handset that goes on the end of the wire there. It's all run by this foot pedal that I then plug into the motor and then it sits on the ground and it, it lets you adjust the speed of the tool as you're using it. In the collet, you put your little bit and you can tighten it with this tool and we're ready to go. So I'm not gonna lie, not only was this incredibly messy, it was incredibly fun. I just kind of got into this Zen space of making all of my mushy epoxy clay look like stone, uh, erasing little finger marks, all my little just, you know, imperfections and things that would give it away as a not actual volcanic mountain. I also had to make sure that the marbles still would roll down the courses so you can see me checking many times to make sure that the marbles would all fit through their tracks. Again, I am in no way sponsored by Fordham, but I will say that the tool was a dream tool to use. The foot pedal made uh, controlling it speed extremely easy uh, and intuitive. And uh, the handpiece, even though I use it for hours, it never got hot. Whew, okay, well, I think I might have to stop for the day because we're getting a lot of thunderstorm warnings and I don't want to get stuck out here in the rain. Anyway, super fun start. Uh, I've got the caves, like this one is an actual cave. Um, forms are coming together nicely. I'm especially happy with what's happening over here. Um, I think this is looking really good. Uh, I do want to go back. Uh, I'm going to swap the bits out and I'm going to be doing some more interesting layering and stuff in here. Um, just kind of break it up a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it overall. There's a lot of stuff I want to fix. Like, let's see. So this is kind of a curve shape and you don't see Cliff faces don't curve in, so I want to make a little bit of a spire coming up here to connect. I mean, it won't actually connect, but I want to make sure I keep that that angle going all the way through. I'm debating these extreme peaks. They're very uh, Matterhorn-esque, and I don't know. I like that they're very fantastical, but eh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to cut them off just yet, but um, I'm going to let I'm going to let it stew for a little while. Uh, but yeah, a very good first start. The tool is fantastic. And um, yeah, I can't wait to dive back into this when the weather clears. 
Once I got all of the power tools in a safe, dry location, I put a little bit more time in using some old-fashioned hand tools. I went at the arch with the saw and I uh, really kind of cleaned things up a bit. And then uh, I even got fancier using some hand files. The files turned out to be great for really just accentuating the slope of the mountain faces and putting in some just nice, you know, erosion, detail, texture, all that, that good mountainous volcanic stuff that you know and love. All right, it's Monday morning. Uh, slip casting, back to slip casting. And in the meantime, while the slip is dwelling, I am going through and just double checking the gameplay. When I was doing all the carving uh, yesterday, I didn't have Volcar himself out to test with the marbles. I had a little test marble, but he definitely uh, launches the marbles differently than just rolling the marble from here. Um, so I'm doing some tests. Um, pretty good, but I found out a couple times when I do this, the marble will actually jump the course right here. So I'm going through and I'm just kind of putting little markings on the board um, where I want to add a little more epoxy. So I'm just making some notes, things I want to change. Uh, right here, there's a little bump in the game that gets a little odd sometimes. Just kind of, I just don't like the way it's directing the marble. So that's what we're doing. Ah. See, I'm gonna need a little something right there. So we've got another batch of freeform air epoxy mixed up and we are correcting all of these courses so that the marble does not jump the track as it hurls its way down the mountain. I am also going to go in and fix up that one section that looked weird. There I am putting in the putty. Uh, I didn't like that curved face, so I'm connecting it down to the base there so we have a proper nice angular mountain slope. I'm also making some kind of basalt crystals, some neat rock forms, just to add some interest to this section of the mountain. I'm still inside the studio, so I can't use the Fordham tool. It just makes too much sawdust. But I'm going through with the hand file, adding some extra little little bonus details. And I'm also hollowing out the caldera, the inner crater of the volcano, because uh, I have some, some big ideas for what I want to do inside to make it even cooler. Okay, folks, are you ready? It's time to voyage to Fireball Island. Here it is, here's where we're at. Um, I'm gonna stop it here because I've got a coat of primer on here. I think it's looking really good. Um, it's, a good it's a good ending point for stage two of our Game Relics adventure. Let's take a look at where we're at. It's a proper island now, with a proper volcano. It looks imposing, it looks daunting. Do you want to climb this to get the magical jewel? I don't know, it could be dangerous. Let's find out. Yeah, so that worked out great. Super happy with Volcanic Crater. All right, so we have got a ton done, but there's still a lot more to do on this board. Like, it's almost overwhelming for me. Uh, the more I do, the more I'm like, oh my God, there's so much more to go. Um, let's see if we can break it down a bit. First up, for sure, I've got to get in here and tackle the bridge section. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it didn't fill all the way when I put the epoxy into the game board originally, so I've got to rebuild both of the sections where the bridges connect. And that's pretty technical. I want to get that right. Still got to remove a bit here because the marble's working weird. Overall, I just put all of the game positions on with a Sharpie matching the original game board. Now you can see that it's Sharpie, it's an alcohol-based ink, and it's kind of, it comes off every time I spritz alcohol on here to smooth out the epoxy clay. So I've got to rethink this. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm debating carefully scribing with my rotary tool these lines with a very, very small bit. I just want to make sure it doesn't affect the marble, the rolling of the marble. I've got to go in and finish out the crater that I started. I want to 
angle this down. It would be cool to put a little piece of acrylic on the bottom so we could have some red light, get maybe some super fancy stuff like that. Got to fill in this section where Volcar is going to go. I need to address all of the bits where the armature was poking through. Like here, I tore out some foam here. We've got some paper bits here, paper bits here. I've got to cover those with epoxy or figure something out so that doesn't look icky. Uh, here's some more over here. The fort, there's a fort on this corner. Um, it's supposed to be a fort, but I think I'm gonna turn it into some sort of ancient stone temple. Um, flesh this out a bit, get it looking cooler. So yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, and I mean a lot. I think that when I tackle this, when we move into episode three, I'm going to just kind of break the board up into sections, maybe six sections. Can you do six quadrants? Is that possible? Six areas. Uh, so and I will just really dial in on those areas. Um, otherwise I get distracted. I start to work on this thing. I'm like, ooh, that's, and I start to work on that and it just goes all over the place. And, or maybe that's okay. Maybe this is a fun project. Just let it happen organically. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot to do and I'm excited about it. I want to say thank you for joining me on the adventure so far. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It, it means a lot to me. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next steps. I still have big hopes and dreams. I'd love to get some electronics in here, get it to light up. It would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a lot. And it's funny, it feels like it's, it's taking forever because uh, I'm only working on it in like 20 minute sections as we go along. But then when I go back and look at the footage and, and cut it together, it's like, oh my God, I've done a lot on this. So it's, it's good, it makes me feel good. Um, but yeah, super, super happy with it so far. Um, yeah, can't wait to move on to part three.